Welcome back to Daily Riot. We got another bombshell for you today. Edward Snowden just revealed that the NSA is back at it again. Now, you guys remember Edward Snowden during the Obama administration who helped to expand the NSA's ability to spy on Americans. That Edward Snowden, he blew the whistle on them back then. The United States government has accused him of espionage for revealing the fact that the government was committing crimes against citizens. The government responded with, nope. We're going to put you in prison for life if you come back here. And there's plenty of people out there who actually side with the government, who actually think that the government should be able to commit crime, should be able to spy on you, and they should be able to do whatever they want whenever they want to. Why do you think that the NSA would all of a sudden stop doing what they do just because one of their programs got uh, revealed or exposed? This entire organization is here to spy on American citizens. So... You take one of their programs away, you think they're just going to stop being the NSA? Of course not. So they found a loophole to basically violate your privacy again. They've decided to buy this data from commercial outlets, organizations that do data collection. The NSA decided, you know what? It's easier. Let's just go ahead and buy this stuff from them. Here's an article by the New York Times. NSA buys Americans' internet data without warrants. There's a reason the government needs a warrant in order to get your data. The Constitution has provisions in there to stop the government from spying on you. The NSA says, no, we need to spy on you in order to protect you. Oh, wait. They need to spy on you in order to protect you. Let's see. If we say that several more times, maybe it'll make more sense. That is the reasoning of the NSA. In fact, anytime anyone ever says, I'm doing this to protect you, anytime politicians specifically say this, Rest assured, that's code for get ready because we're going to screw you. Because I can assure you that these politicians don't give a crap about protecting you. They only care about protecting themselves. So we're doing this to protect you is code for we're doing this to screw you over. So the National Security Agency buys certain logs related to Americans' domestic internet activities from commercial data brokers, according to an unclassified letter by the agency. So the agency had to unclassify certain documents, which revealed this. The letter addressed to a Democratic senator and obtained by the New York Times offered few details about the nature of the data, other than to stress that it did not include the content of internet communications. Intelligence and law enforcement agencies sometimes purchase potentially sensitive and revealing domestic data, from brokers that would require a court order to acquire directly. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, that pesky thing called the Constitution? A lot of people just hand over their data without thinking about it. It's absolutely dangerous, and the potential for further abuse hasn't even been realized yet. We're just entering this age where your data being in the hands of organizations is going to end up harming you. It's never, ever going to end up helping you in any way, shape, or form. It's only there to harm you. Here's an article, and it's from CNBC, of all people, who are saying, here are the five risks of sharing your DNA with consumer genetic testing companies. Like, you know, 23andMe. People just freely go, you know what? Here, here's my genetic data. Let me just hand it over to you guys. What can come of that? Well, just recently, there was a huge hack. I think 23andMe got hacked. The majority of their database was stolen and is being sold online for various governments to be able to buy, people who may hate us. Who knows? Who knows? But what are some things that can happen? Well, you're always going to get the washed down, watered down version of like, how is this a good thing? How is this a good thing? Because that's called damage control. They have to do damage control to make you think it's a good thing. So here's the thing, law enforcement knows these companies have your DNA. So requests from law enforcement and courts for your data are already happening and also can be done under subpoena. Remember the Golden State Killer, that whole situation where he was missing, they didn't know who he was, where he was. It looks like it was cracked with the help of DNA from a genealogy company. Catching a murderer is a good thing, but the ability of law enforcement to target your DNA through these testing companies is a big issue. Darnofsky noted that in the Golden State Killer case, law enforcement found their way to the suspect by using DNA from relatives. She said there is a lesson in this for consumers. When you provide your genetic information to a DNA testing company, you're also providing information about those related to you, including distant cousins. So the problem is the laws don't 
cover any kind of privacy when it comes to this data. They haven't done anything to cover it. Most of those companies will say under certain circumstances, personal information may be subject to disclosure pursuant to judicial or other government subpoenas, warrants, or orders in coordination with regulatory authorities. However, we use all practical legal and administrative resources to resist such requests. Yeah, that's bullcrap. All that's saying is that, hey, um, now that you've given us this data, we're just going to give it over to the government when they ask us for it. Now you're thinking, well, what's the big deal here? So what if they have my DNA data? Like, what does that mean? How's that going to hurt me in any kind of way? They're catching killers with it, right? Yeah, sure. But let me go ahead and give you a little hypothetical here, okay? This is something known as a genetic weapon. Now, this has been something that's been known, ethnic bioweapon, they also call it. And this is a Wikipedia article. In 2004, The Guardian reported that the British Medical Association considered bioweapons designed to target certain ethnic groups as a possibility and highlighted problems that advances in science for such things as treatment to Alzheimer's and other debilitating diseases could also be used for malign purposes. Hmm. So it looks like the data or the technology that they're developing for treating Alzheimer's or various other medical technologies that they use in order to target certain genomes, you can probably use CRISPR to actually create this. I don't even think this would be a difficult thing to do. In 2005, the official view of the International Committee of the Red Cross was the, quote, Potential to target a particular ethnic group with a biological agent is probably not far off. Hmm. So the Red Cross is saying that we're probably not far off. This They said this in 2005, all right, 2005, that they can make a bioweapon that can target genes. Imagine a, a cold, a simple cold that they take and modify, and next year round, they release it into the population. Now, this cold spreads, and let's say you get infected. It doesn't harm you. It just makes you sick a little bit, just like the cold would. But then it keeps going, and other people get infected. And when a certain person with a certain genetic marker gets infected with this cold, guess what happens? Well, it starts to act differently on that person and basically takes them out of the game. Imagine that spreading worldwide and absolutely wiping out certain ethnicities that they have chosen, or it doesn't even have to be an entire ethnicity. It could be subgroups. They can choose to target certain types of genomes and take those people out. The potential to target these ethnic groups, these scenarios, are not the product of the ICRC's imagination, but have either occurred or been identified by countless independent and government experts. Now, this is the Red Cross saying this in 2005, that they've already seen something like this happen, and they've already been identified by countless independent government experts. So they have it. So why would it be a bad thing to just give your information, your genetic information to, I don't know, 23andMe? Hmm. Why? Because they just got hacked and all of that data is out there for anyone to take, look through, and create custom bioweapons to target people in that list. Hmm. Or maybe the NSA. Hmm. Now, they recently, recently, the government has classified people who went shopping at certain stores as possible terrorists. Now, these people are generally supporters of Trump, and they're usually religious people. And so the government, the FBI, classified these people as religious extremists. If the government felt like you were a threat, whether you are or not, it doesn't matter. If they felt like you're a threat in some kind of way, and they decided, you know what, we need to take these people out of the game. Hmm. Or maybe it's someone else. It's not the government. It doesn't really matter. The bottom line is, this information being out there that's on you, that's how to be able to target you specifically using your genetic makeup is just floating around out there. Put the pieces together, guys. Put the pieces together. So it's never in your best interest to give out any kind of data on you, ever, because this information is being used against you. Now, there's a reason why the Constitution provides provisions to protect your privacy. 